Hey guys, we're here again today at Hard Racing, and we're going to go over piston ring gaps. A lot of guys don't always remember to do this. It's really, really important that you have proper piston ring gaps. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're blueprinting your motor. You're making sure that your piston rings are specifically set up for your cylinder. And this is important because, generally speaking, your rings are not made by the same company that makes your cylinder. So your rings could have a slight variance in one direction and your cylinder another, and then your gap is wrong. Generally speaking, uh, if your rings are not correct, the gap's not correct, you're going to have issues eventually. Especially if they're too tight. If they're too loose, you have too much gap then basically you're just going to have a little bit loss of power. But if they're too tight, meaning they almost touch each other, or they actually touch each other, eventually you're going to have piston ring failure. They have to have a gap, and it actually has to be a specific measurement. And we're going to go over that now and show you the, basically how that works. So here's the chart. This is JE and Wiseco's recommendation. They're pretty much known as the best piston manufacturers on the planet. Obviously, everybody has their own personal preference if they're a piston guy, but these are very pretty much top quality companies. So today we're going to be doing a Grom uh, big bore kit with a 2.5 inch bore. It's our 183 Finbrow motor. And so we're going to go on this chart here. And as you can see, high performance street or drag strip, your top ring is supposed to be 0 0.0045 inches per inch of cylinder bore. That doesn't mean 0 0.0045 for every cylinder, for every piston, for every ring. That means per inch of cylinder bore. So if your cylinder bore, meaning the distance from this side to this side, was one inch, then this chart would be exactly what you use. So your ring gap would be 0 0.0045. That's if your cylinder bore was one inch. Our cylinder bore is two and a half inches across. So basically you're gonna take 0 0.0045 and multiply it times 2.5. So here's what we got. Ring one, 2.5 inch cylinder bore times 0 0.0045 equals 0.011. So that means our top ring needs to have a ring gap of 0.011. Then for the second ring, this is really, really important, has to be a larger gap than the top ring. And that one's going to be 0 0.0055 per inch of cylinder bore. So again, our cylinder that we're working on is 2.5 inches times 0 0.0055 equals 0 0.0137. And we're going to round that up because our feeler gauges go, they don't go that much. So you basically it'll be 0 0.014. Slightly larger for your second ring is okay. Just a teeny bit. The biggest and most important thing is that your second ring has a larger gap than your top ring. And you want to know why? Right there. The gap in the second ring should always be larger than the top. This will help reduce top ring flutter and lifting. Basically it'll make everything work correctly, last longer, you won't get air gaps in there, pockets. Basically if you have overpressure in your top ring it needs to be able to shoot through by your second ring so that the rings don't fail. This doesn't seem like a very important thing, but it is really important if you want your engine to last a long time. You can usually get by or just throwing them in there and going, but if you want it done right, if you want it to last a long time, check your ring gaps. And again, this is basically like blueprinting your motor, making every sure everything fits together the way it's supposed to be within a set amount of tolerance. And now we're going to show you how you do that. It's actually pretty easy. So you're going to have two main rings and they will have writing on the top that means they go up and then one will have a one on it and one will have a two on it your other rings are basically your oil rings 
those are real thin races to uh, one that goes on top and bottom and then your oil ring which is the so basically your second ring must be a larger gap than your top ring so how do you do that this is how you do it so you take your first ring and you're gonna put it in there and you're gonna very carefully slide it in alright so what you wanna have is an even amount of gap all the way around don't bring it all the way to the lip of the cylinder because sometimes there's a slight variance at the very very edge of it it shouldn't be but theoretically it should be an even bore all the way down but sometimes at the very end it's got a slight taper inward so put it just a little bit a few millimeters down below the top edge but make sure it's even you don't want it sideways in the cylinder or this way and so you want it flat so make sure you look all the way around it and it's an even amount of space all the way around the cylinder now you're going to take a feeler gauge like this one here and since we're doing our top ring and again remember these numbers vary depending on your cylinder bore so ours is 2.5 inches across so our gap for the top is going to be 0.011 inches this also has millimeters but we're not using that today so it's 0.011 everything we're doing today is in inches so you take your feeler gauge and you should be able to slide it in that gap now you can see this one doesn't slide in that gap so what that means is we have to take a little bit of material off of one of the edges of the piston ring that gap is too small worst case that gaps touching each other and no air no pressure can get by it eventually these rings are gonna fail so what you do is you take the ring out carefully always trying to be careful with everything you don't want to scratch anything you don't want to damage anything and you've got two options to take the material off you can take a file very carefully very slowly file it down or you can get one of these pretty inexpensive ring gap wheels and you basically hold that on the wheel like this and then you slowly turn the wheel and what that does is it gives you a nice 90 degree controlled file down on the edge of the ring and you only want to do a little bit at a time because remember if you do too much now you're screwed now you have to get new piston rings so do a little bit at a time and measure it eventually you'll get an idea of how much comes off each time you rotate that wheel or if you just use a normal file but the very very important thing is you need to make sure that you file it at 90 degrees meaning these rings need to touch each other and be square you don't want is when the rings touch each other to have a gap in between them because you filed one of them sideways so it's very careful to make sure that it's square with whatever you're using to file it don't do it like this don't do it like this file it at 90 degrees and only do one side don't pinch them together and try to do them both and make sure you have it flat against the surface while you file it again it doesn't take much to file it you just need to do a little bit at a time and go back and measure it so you're going to do your top ring a little bit at a time and then you're going to go put it back in the cylinder alright so once you've sanded it down your filler gauge should slide in there just barely it should be a nice tight fit it should not be sloppy if it's sloppy then you took off too much material and you gotta buy new rings there's no way around it you can't magically make the material come back on it so make sure you do a little bit at a time till it just barely fits in there and then you know you have the right gap set for that ring then you set that ring aside make sure you wipe it all off because it's gonna have little pieces of metal on it and take your second ring and do the same exact process put it in there close it in measure it and of course again this varies depending on your cylinder bore just do the math like we showed you in the beginning but on ours on this second one it's going to be 
0.014. So we're going to do the same process again. We're going to measure it. And then however much we need to take off, we're going to go over here, grind it down a little bit, measure it again until we get the 0.014. And once you do that, you're going to have kind of a sharp edge on here, and that's not good. So what you want to do is take some light grit sandpaper and just gingerly take the burrs off the edges of each corner. You don't need to make it round. You definitely don't want to make it round. All you're trying to do is just take any sharp edges that are going to scratch the cylinder. And then you'll be good to go. Then you'll have your rings blueprinted for your cylinder with the exact gap that you're supposed to have. And this will ensure a much longer lasting engine. If you have any other questions, send us an email, give us a call, hardracing.com, we'll get you taken care of.